Hey, yours truly, yours truly, yours truly. Bishop Jason Bradley, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Thank you, precious. Thank you. Come on in. To God be all of the glory. Hallelujah. Bless your elder. Bless your elder. God bless you. Mother Anderson, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Amen. Hey, Cedric. How you doing? Deacon College, God bless you. God bless you. Good evening to you, Elder. Bless you. Bless you, Elder Anderson. God bless you. Grace and peace to you. Grace and peace to you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So good to see you all. Bless you too, Mother. I love you all so much. Amen. Amen. Hugs and hugs and hugs to each and every one of you all. Amen. Hey, Krista, God bless you. God bless you. Deacon Kearns, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Sister Angie, God bless you. Love you much. Love you much. Love you much. Turn that just a little bit, just a little bit more if you would. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, my good friend down there in Raleigh, North Carolina. Dr. Braxton Bowser. Hey, man, I love you, man. God bless you. Bless you. Please give your family our regards from First Lady and I. God bless you. God bless you. I'm doing well. I'm doing well, Cedric. Thank you for asking. I am doing well. I miss the people of God. I miss being in the presence of the people of God, but I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Bless you, too. How are you doing? Tell me how you're doing. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Linda, God bless you. Deacon Blaine, God bless you, sir. Trust you all are doing well. Send something up. Let me know how you guys are doing. It's a great day today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, Ty, great, great evening to you. So glad to see. Amen. So many of you all chiming in. I miss you all so much. Thanks for the love. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Good seeing you too. Good seeing you too. Hey, give Bunny a hug for me. Let her know Bishop and First Lady says hello. We miss her immensely. Thank you all so much. I mean it. God bless you, Evangelist. God bless you. Highly favored. Amen. Blessed and highly favored. That's how you're doing. That's right. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know how you're doing. Thank you, Elder. You're blessed and highly favored. Will y'all share this too? Let some of the others know that we're on, please. Amen. Let me know how you're doing. Type in there. Let me know how you're doing. Bless you, Mother. Amen. Greetings to you. More grace to you. More grace to you. Hey, what's up, Joe? What's up, Joe? Hey, man. Good to see you. Love you. Love you. Y'all type in there. Let me know how you're doing. Amen. If I sound redundant, sometimes people are responding at the same time and I don't get a chance to see them all. All right. At least not while they're going up, you know, sometime. But amen. Love you all so much. So much. So much. All is well. Everybody's doing good on your end. Beautiful, Elder Anderson. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Y'all doing good, Joe? Good, good, good. Good. Mother Rosa, amen, down south. Trust you're doing well. Adrian, I'm glad you're doing well. Amen. Linda, you're doing good. God bless you. You're thankful. I know that's right. I know that's right. You're feeling good in your spirit, mother. Amen. Amen. I believe God's going to bless us real good for these next few moments that we're together. Amen. Hey, Stacy. God bless you. God bless you. It was good running into you. I know we had to practice social distancing, but it was good seeing you. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you, Pastor Pressy. Amen. We're staying safe. We're staying safe. Down in Mississippi. That's right. That's right. Mother Rosa, you know who. You know I know you. Oh, come on now. I love you so much. Good to see you. Good to see you. Y'all doing well? Hey, man, my family's doing good. Everybody's doing great. Just want to give it a few more minutes, maybe another minute or so. Good evening to you, Mother Gail. How you doing, Mother? 
Hey man, let me know real short how you doing. You doing good, mother? Hey Amen. Mother Rose is doing fine down in Mississippi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all, please share this. Please share. God bless you all so much. I miss you all so much. I mean that. I miss you all so, so very much. I look forward to coming on and seeing you all on Wednesdays and on Sundays. I've been in prayer. Amen. And I know you all have been in prayer. We're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm just believing God to do great and mighty things. Continue to bless his people greatly. My good brother and friend, Dr. Lonnie Burton. Please give Lady Tammy Burton. Amen. Our love. Please, please. Good to see you. Mother Lucy, Mother Lucy, First Lady, and I will call on your name in prayer. God bless you. God bless you. My cousin down in the 305. Hey, Sister Frazier. That's right. That's right. How about that? My cousin Keisha. Hey, God bless y'all so much. Love y'all so much. Give everybody my love, Keisha. Please, please. Y'all, please be safe. Y'all, please be safe. Please be safe. Please stay safe, all right? And you know, life-changing, we believe this, and we say it all the time, amen, that the storm is over and the drought has passed, amen? And I'm believing that God is going to bring us through this safe and sound. I believe it with every fiber of my being, with every fiber of my being. I love you too, Keisha. I haven't seen you in, my God, a long time. And I tell you, when all of this is over, Sonia and I were talking Amen. And I told her, I said, when all of this is over, we're going to head on a little vacation at some point in time. Amen. But being quarantined with each other, she might want to take her own vacation. Amen. And get away from me for a little bit. You know, uh, that's meant to be funny. But uh, to God be all of the glory. Love you all so much. Amen. All the way from Nigeria. God bless you. God bless you, Clement. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen for chiming in. I know we're on two different time zones. Amen. But thank you all so much. So much. I miss you all so much. I mean it. I miss you all so much. Dr. Ballard. Dr. Ballard. Hey, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Everybody's doing fine. Listen, I want to pray. Make a few observations. And then let's get right into the word of the Lord. This is what you're tuned in for. Amen. That's right. I appreciate y'all sending the love back and forth to each other. That means so much. That means so much. That means so much. Uh, I tell you one thing. Uh, I thank God for the privilege to serve his people. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I thank God for the privilege to serve his people. Life-changing Christian Center ministry partners and family and friends. I thank y'all. I read a sign the other day that said family, uh, friends are the family you make for yourselves. Amen. And so I thank you all. You know, we got family here. I call all y'all family and friends. I love y'all so, so much and know that I've been praying for you all. And I mean that without a doubt. All right. Please share this. Some of them are coming in a little late, but they'll get here and some of them may have to go back and and watch it again. But I love y'all so much. I've enjoyed uh, coming to you all and I look forward to coming to you all. It keeps us connected. So let's stay connected. Let's, let's stay connected. Amen. And thank you all that the love is mutual. Hey, Terry, God bless you. God bless you. Hug Nisi and them. Let them know I love them so, so very much. I mean that without a doubt. All righty. All right. Listen, uh, I'm going to say this here. Uh, First Lady and I, we've been talking, and I'm really trying to get her buy-in. Hey, Nicole, good to see you, Nikki. Uh, and I want to I want to do something that is going to uh, minister to not just the married couples, but I want to do something that's going to minister to the singles. I want to talk to the singles and, and, and those who want to get married one day, all right? So uh, I'm working with my team to put something together so that we could do that, so that we could do that. We could come together. Maybe we'll do it on Zoom or something, I'm understanding, so that we'll be able to talk back and forth and see each other and hear each other. All righty? So that's going to be coming. That's going to be coming. And I'm telling you something. God has given me a wealth of wisdom uh, when it comes to relationships. I don't claim to uh, know it all or, or have, have all the wealth and wisdom, but God has given me wisdom, wisdom through his word, through his word. 
Uh, but there are some things that I think needs to be addressed and some things that need to be talked about that would really bless and benefit the people of God. So send some hearts and lights up if, if uh, that'd be good. Now, let me say this to you. Just because it's for the singles that married folk, that don't mean you can't join in because perhaps maybe there was something that uh, you might be said that you might gain that could help you, you know, as you continue to move forward. Bless you, Elder Cochran. Good to see you. Good to see you. So that's going to be coming real soon. Now, it won't be on Wednesday and it won't be on Sundays. All right. I mean, Saturdays. Thank you, sweetie. It won't be on Wednesdays. Uh, it's going to be something late night. It's going to be something late night. I said the other day, I said, well, maybe I'll do something when the kids have gone to bed. And my daughter said to me, when that's going to be, because sometimes we don't go to bed until five, six, seven o'clock in the morning. And I said, okay, well, I'm just going to have to pick a time and do this. And uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I just need to uh, put some things in place and really go through some things and make sure I'm prepared to talk with you all concerning these things because it won't be real churchy. Let me just put it that way. It won't be real churchy. It's going to deal with the reality of some circumstances and situations uh, that people are constantly seeing on a regular basis because when this is all over, when this is all over, everybody going to be making a mad dash, you know, trying to get to wherever. I hope they run it back to the church. That's what I really hope. I hope that they making a mad dash back to the church. Hey, Keisha, God bless you. I hope that that's what they're going to do. But um, uh, trust me, I want you to have this information and be on with this information as we come out of this. All righty. It's going to be real, real, real good, real good, real good. I was telling somebody the other day, I said there are about three to four different types of men out there. Whether you're saved or unsaved, there are about three to four different types of men out there. And I said that there's uh, boys. I said then there's the player. And then there's the real man. Let me just drop that on you. There are boys, there's players, and then there are real men. Now, let me say this to you, just a little prelude. Growing older is not an option, but growing up is. And, and I want to put this out there because I want to be able to protect both men and women because sometimes, you know, we go into something and find out that it's not what we thought it was. And so I want to talk about these things because you got some grown boys out there. Grown boys, grown boys. They, whether they mama boys, whether they just spoil you, they grown boys. I better talk slow on this one. They grown boys and, and they portraying themselves as men and they're grabbing up these young ladies. And you got some little girls out there too. You know, they claim to be grown women, but they look girls. They look girls. I'm not talking about age now. I'm talking about mentality and maturity. You know, that boy, all he concerned about is himself. You know, his video games, what he got on, how he look, what he drive. You know, he's just a little boy. Then you got that player. You got that player out there. You know, he's just, he just a player. You know, he's saved. He got the Holy Ghost, so he's saved. But he's just a player. And he'll lie and he'll say things that's not necessary and he'll do stuff. And all he's trying to do, you know what he's trying to do. And he's a player. You got some female players out there. You know, they'll play you just to get their utilities paid. I don't hear nobody talking back to me up on this thing here. But they players and they in the church, they out of the church. And then you got grown men and grown women. And, and these are the type of things we want to talk about so you'll be able to identify the little boy. It's dressed up like a grown man. You'll be able to identify the player, all righty? And so we're going to talk about these things, and it's, it's going to be real good. It's going to be real good. It's going to be real good. You'll be able to uh, chime back in and ask some questions, and maybe I may not have your answer, but perhaps somebody else will, okay? And uh, it's going to be informative, and it's going to be fun, all righty? Now, y'all know without a doubt, if there's anybody that knows how to throw a party and keep it fun, it's yours truly, Bishop J. Brownlee right here, funky fresh in the flesh. All right, listen, let's go into the word of the Lord. Hey, Bonita, God bless you. God bless you. Let's go into the word of the Lord. All right, I believe God's going to bless his people real good. Give me about, um, I don't know, just give me a few minutes. Amen. I never hold you long. I never want to abuse your time. All righty. And let's go into the word of the Lord. Now, listen, let me say this to you. You don't have to wait to the end to sow. Okay. 
You don't have to wait. Some of y'all, you know, I'm going to wait till the end of the soul. You ain't got to wait till the end of the soul. You're trying to wait. Maybe it's going to be good. No, it's going to be good. All right? You're going to get something out of this. You don't have to wait till the end. So uh, if you want to sow now, all right, that's fine. Uh, it's Cash App. You know the Cash App. Dollar Sign Life Changing One. All right? Dollar Sign Life Changing One. Or you can go to Giblify Life Changing Christian Center. Okay? Somebody put that up. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, or you can log on to the church website at lifechangingcc.info. And I say it all the time. Let me say this to you. If there's anything God's going to do, he's going to take care of his church. So don't get in your mind that when we come on and present the opportunity to sow, all right, that we're trying to get something from you. That devil is a liar, all right? Sowing is how God gets it to you. As long as you hold that seed in your hand, guess what? It can never become what God intended for it to become. But when you release it and put it in the ground, I'm telling you right now, the potential and the possibilities are endless. Y'all ain't saying nothing back to me on this. God bless you, Sister Jackie. We love you so much. Alrighty. So I, I need all of those that believe in seed time and harvest that believe that you got seed in the ground. No, you got seed in the ground. You got a harvest coming. I need that's right. Send up some thumbs and like on that. Is that all right? All right. I love y'all so very, very much. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. All right. Let's pray. Uh, y'all give, give me a little glass of water. If you don't mind, ask your mother, if that's all right. Amen. Just a little bit of something. Y'all, let's pray. Y'all keep First Lady in prayer too. Call her name out in prayer, please, please, because she quarantined in the house. She got to deal with me, and that's a full-time uh, ministry itself. So, y'all, that's meant to be facetious. That's meant to be funny, all right? So, y'all y'all keep her in prayer. Please, please do that, all right? I love y'all so, so, so very much, and First Lady sends her love. All right, let's get to the business at hand. Gracious and eternal Father, we thank you and we bless you. Hiya, she hama. God, we glorify you because you are the best thing that has ever happened to us. God, I thank you for lying us down last night and waking us up early this morning. God, I thank you for roof over our heads, Father, and clothing on our backs. God, I thank you, Father, for the activities of our limbs and the blood yet running warm in our veins. God, I thank you because there's nobody like you nowhere in all of the earth. God, we love you and we bless you. God, thank you, Father, that you have ordained it and preordained it, Father. Uh, you decreed and determined, Father, that before the beginning of time that you have chosen me to minister to your people and to love the greatest people in all of the world. Father, I thank you. And God, I bless you right now, Father, that our ministry is not just limited to the four walls of the church. God, I thank you, Father, that you're allowing us to enlarge in our territory and stretch forth our stakes. Oh, God, we thank you for this right now. God, I thank you right now, Father, that even in the midst of this pandemic, you're keeping us and you're watching over us. God, I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for food on our tables and clothing on our backs. Oh, God, God, I thank you. Thank you, oh God, for clean running water. God, I thank you, Father, for the things that people take for granted. God, I thank you, Father, that not one day have we lacked anything. Come on, you all, talk back to me with your hearts and your likes. God, I thank you for it right now, that you've been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. God, I thank you, Father, that even in the midst of this, Father, while, while there are those who have been infected and, and those who have transitioned from labor to reward, God, I thank you that even in the midst of this, Father, that we can lean on your word, Father, that you're our keeper, you're our protector, you're our strong tower, and for this we say thank you. Now I, I ask right now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would give me clarity of my thoughts, Father, that you would speak through my mouth and see through my eyes. Oh, Father. And for this, we say thank you. Bless your people through the word. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Y'all come on, keep praying with me, Father. I thank you for it right now. Now, God, as we go into your word, I pray now that lives will be changed. Hey, my God, and minds will be transformed. In the name of Jesus, sick bodies shall be healed, oh God. 
in the name as they tune in, Father. I thank you right now that you are regulating, Father, that you are restoring, God, in the name of Jesus. God, cover and keep us, oh God. Hey, my God, my God. Say to the Lord, rebuke you. And we bless God, Father, in spite of, nevertheless, and anyhow. The blood prevails, the blood prevails, the blood prevails. And for this, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, we praise you and we bless you. Right where you are, open your mouth and decree and declare hallelujah, hallelujah to the risen King. And for this, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, listen. You know, I, I have to come out of that because, you know, I'll sit here and I'll pray and I'll pray and I'll pray. Because, you know, prayer, that's, that, that's where God is moving at. I'm telling you now. I want to talk about that tonight. Let's go into the word of the Lord. Let's go into the word of the Lord. I'm still trying to come out of that. I'm still trying to come out of that because I feel the presence of the Lord. I mean that without a doubt. I feel the presence of the Lord. And I want to challenge you to create an atmosphere that's conducive for miracles. Good God Almighty. I said I want to challenge you to create an atmosphere that's conducive for miracles. Go and find a place in your habitation. I'm telling you whether it's at your kitchen table or in your coat closet. Don't do it now. Let me say that. Don't do it now. But you're watching me now. But but make sure you find a place, all right? And, and you designate that place as your place where you meet God in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you now, hear me good. Sometimes when you go in that place, you may say, oh my God, I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting there. Sit there and play some worship music. And I'm going to tell you right now how to expand. I got to get to my text in Mark 11. How to expand your prayer life. When you go into prayer, don't just go into prayer begging and asking God to do stuff. No, I'm going to give you this. This is free. I want you to go into prayer adoring God. God, you are holy. God, you are righteous. There's nobody like you. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. God, I thank you for being our kinsman redeemer. Thank you for being the righteous one. Thank you, Father, for being the only true and living God. When you start adoring God, I'm telling you, go in and start adoring God and then begin to confess him. We'll talk about that in a minute here, all righty, if the Lord allows us to get to it. Then you start confessing him. When you start confessing him, God, I confess to you. God, that, that I may have not dotted all my I's or crossed all my T's, but I confess that you are my healer and you are my strength. And then you start thanking him. You start thanking him. God, I thank you. God, I bless you. God, I glorify you. You just start thanking him. Just start thanking him. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how crazy it sounds. I want you to hear me as the mouthpiece of God tonight. Start thanking him. I'm telling you right now, didn't you know that thanking God only makes room for more? And when you start thanking him, I took a walk around the house the other day on the outside. And I just began to tell God, I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not talking about thanking God for the house. I'm thanking God that I can see the bright sunshine. God, I thank you that I can feel the warm breeze. Well, up here's a little cool now. But God, I thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want you to get that in your mind that you just start thanking God and then you supplicate. Make sure that what you're asking God for is at the end and not the beginning. I want you to hear me good on this one here. Make sure. Let me tell you something before I go into the text. And if I get there, fine. If I don't, you're going to get what you need. I was sitting at the table the other day, and my beloved wife, uh, she has this homemade corn she makes. She's from the South, you know. Well, her parents from the South. She from Southeast D.C., okay, close enough, all right? And, and she shuck the corn. She gets the knife, and she cuts the kernels. I know you young folk, you probably know nothing about this right here. She shucks the corn, and she takes the kernels 
off the cob. Oh my God. And then she makes, oh, 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 good God, I'm getting happy. She makes this corn and, and she served the corn. And, and I'm telling you, it was so wonderful. And I sat there after I had eaten the corn and I began to tell her, oh, Sonia, this corn is so good. If I never eat another piece of corn in all my days, this corn is so wonderful. And I just began to tell her, and, and she, uh, what she had there, what she had there, bring it back to me, Holy Ghost, what she had there, she put some broccoli on there too, and, and, and what, what she put on there, okra, she put some okra on there, I'm getting happy, she put some okra on there, and, and all I did, but I just told her, I said, ooh, ooh, this corn and okra is so good, oh my God, and I had eaten it all up, and it was all gone off my plate. And I'm just telling you, it was so good. And next thing I know, she come walking over there with the pot in her hand, dipping up some more corn and giving me some more okra. So you just missed that. What are you saying? A lot of times you don't have to ask for anything if you just start thanking him for what you already have. Thank God for the vehicle you got. And I guarantee you, he'll give you another one. Thank God for the house you got. And I guarantee you, if God can allow my wife to put more corn and okra on my plate, you mean to tell me he can't put a brand new vehicle in your driveway? The devil is a dummy. I'm telling you right now, I want you to take about five seconds right now and open your mouth and begin to tell God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the ways you make. God, thank you for the doors you open. God, I thank you right now. Father, for clean running water. You better hear me. You better hear me. I thank you for clean running water. God, I thank you that we got restrooms in the house and don't have to go to our outhouse. God, I thank you right now, Father, that the cupboard is not bare. God, we bless you and we thank you right now. Come on, y'all. Thank you, God, for okra and corn, oh God, in the name of Jesus, and for this we love you, and for this we bless you. Clap your hands and tell God thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let me go into the word of the Lord. I know right now, I'm telling you right now, let me go into the word of the Lord. Listen, we've been praying, we've been praying, thank you. Y'all give me a big old glass of water. Hey, my God. Uh, we, we've been praying, and and uh, this is what I want you to do. Go to Mark, go to St. Mark, Chapter number 11, uh, look at verse number 22. Let me share something with y'all. This is my favorite scripture in all the Bible. In all the Bible, out of all 66 books, this is my favorite scripture. And I'm telling you right now, fall in love with the word of the Lord. You know, this it's Wednesday night. This is our Bible study time. So let's study the word. Fall in love with the word of the Lord. Fall in love. With the word of the Lord, I heard a woman uh, telling the people on TV the other day. This is what she said to the people. She said to the people, hey, old, it's good to see you, man. She said to the people, you don't have to pray that much. Some of us can't pray that long. And that thing upset me. I'm telling you, that thing upset me. You know, over here when something upset me, you know, I'd be talking to the TV and say, oh, that don't make no sense. They'd scream back. No, she didn't just say that there. Why not back? Did y'all hear what she just said? You know, and, and then my wife, she started talking to the TV, but y'all pray for her, please. Because, you know, we'd be watching police shows and she'd be rooting for the bad guy and stuff. You know, man, I just shout up some people. She told me some, run, run, run. And I'm like, what the devil I got myself into? You hollering for the bad guy. Well, do I rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name? But listen, this woman told the people, uh, she said, you don't have to pray that long. You don't have to pray that long. And I understood what she meant, Okay. And then she said to some of y'all, you, you know, it's all right, you know, if you don't pray that long and so on and so forth. And I, I kind of disagree with that because let me say this to you right now. The reason why sometimes you don't pray that long is because you don't know God like that. Yeah, let me let that sizzle in your spirit. When, when you know him in his word, when you know him in his word, I'm telling you, it's just like if you met a stranger. You met a stranger, you're not going to talk to him that long because y'all really don't know each other. All right. But once y'all create some common interests and, and y'all have some commonality and things, I'm telling you, y'all talk like old friends. And I want to expand your prayer life. I ain't talking about some you going in your prayer closet begging God. No. And I'm not saying that every time you pray, you got to pray two and three hours. 
That's not what Bishop is saying. I'm just saying increase your knowledge of the God of the Bible. All righty? And, you know, folks saying, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Well, you can't love God and not love his word. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Come on, God is his word. Come on, talk back to me, life. Come on, talk back to me, friends and partners and family. So, so when you say you love God, spend time in his word. Here, here's the thing. Bless you, pastor. Let me say this to you. I told my beloved wife the other day, I said, sweetie, I'm telling you right now, when we come out of this, I'm praying that the people of God are not in the same place that they were spiritually when we went in this. Oh, my God. When we come out of this, I'm telling you right now, God on me so heavy. Ooh, uh, oh, I believe I can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I'm telling you, God on me so heavy right now. You can ask my kids. I'm telling you, they walk by me in the hallway sometimes. I feel the Holy Ghost. I stop them and start praying for them in the name of Jesus. Lay my hands on them from the crown of the head to the sole of their feet and prophesy and speak a word over them. I'm telling you right now. Let me tell you something right now. If your gift only work at church, then put it up. Um, hear me good on that one. If you can only praise God in public and you don't have a prayer life in private, put it up. I'm telling you right now, because what you do, here, here it is, this, this will sum it up. The root will determine the fruit. So while you are quarantined, while we are in, take time and get to know the God of the Bible. Learn, learn, learn about him. Take his word. Learn about him. Learn him. Learn him. All right. 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 Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here. Uh, uh, Mark 11. Mark 11, I got just a few minutes here. Mark 11, all right, Mark 11, look at uh, verse number 22, my favorite scripture in all of the Bible, all right? It says, and Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, verse 23, that whatsoever, I'm sorry, that whosoever, there we go, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thy removed and be thy cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, which he saith, which he saith, all right, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith, saith, that's a continual, all right, therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. All right. Can I need, can I read another favorite scripture of mine here? This is going to bless you. Ephesians 3 and 20. You probably know this one by heart. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. All righty. All right. Listen, I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. I believe you got what you need, but I just want to share something with you. I'm getting ready to close. Um, it is imperative and it is important. I want you to hear me as the mouthpiece of God that you pray with confidence. Hear me good on that one. That you pray with confidence. Now, now, uh, one of our greatest privileges one of our greatest opportunities that God has ever extended to mankind is prayer. This is important because prayer is defined. God has given me this definition some time ago. Prayer is defined uh, by man's invitation, all right, for God's participation in life situations. That's what God gave me some years ago. He says, define prayer as this, man's invitation for God's participation in life situation. Why do you need to pray? Because according to Psalms 115 and 16, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. Now, prayer is important. I'm closing now. I want you to get this here. Prayer is important, beloved, because prayer demonstrates our dependence upon God. Uh, don't tell nobody you depend upon God and you don't pray. Prayer demonstrates our dependence upon God. Prayer also displays our dedication to God. Oh, I want you to hear me good on this one here. It proves your dependence and then it proves your dedication to God. Prayer also declares that we will not be denied by God. 
I want you to hear me on this one here. Now, prayer demonstrates our dependence. That's Daniel chapter number six, verse number 10. The Bible talks about how Daniel went in three times a day and he began to pray. Now, when you spend time with God, you will begin to depend on him. Oh my God. Let me tell you something. Oftentimes when you come to God, you come to God and, and he has to develop you. Hear me good on this one here. Develop you to your point of depending on him because you come sometimes so independent and he has to get you to the place to where you totally depend on him. I don't care if you was making a hundred million dollars a day, you better not stop depending on God. You, you got to depend on on him. This is what Jesus said. He said, Master, who is the greatest among us? And this is what Jesus did. He brought a little child and set him in the midst. And this is what he said, unless ye be converted and become like this child. Now, you know, children, they depend upon their parents. He said, you can't even enter into the kingdom of God. And so you got to learn how to depend on him. That's what the songwriter said. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I learned to trust in God. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. I'm telling you, get into the word, get into the word, get into the word, and depend upon him. Now, prayer displays our dedication to God. I want you to get this here. I want you to get this down in the city of your soul. It displays our dedication to God. Uh, I don't care if you got a thousand members in your church. I don't care if you got 10,000 folk in your church. I don't care if you got a hundred thousand folk in your church. If your people don't pray, they don't depend. Good God Almighty, you have to pray. You have to pray. And, and I'm not against churches with 10,000 and 20,000 members. Don't get that twisted. I preach for them and I enjoy it. God bless you. But you talking about a serious move of God. Sometimes, you know, I've gone and preached at big convocations and people as far as the I'm telling you now, uh, somebody trying to call me. They know I'm online. I don't know why you're trying to call me. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. All right. Uh, people as far as the eye can see and then leave and go somewhere and have to preach at a little storefront. I'm telling you, there's about 150 people in there and them folk calling on the name of Jesus and you talking about God moving like you ain't never seen him move before. Why? Because prayer displays our dedication to God. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, you can say what you want to say. When you get in that posture of prayer, it will show God that you have your mind made up that you will not be denied. This is what the Bible says in Luke chapter number 18, verse number one. Men ought always pray and not faint. Men ought always pray and not faint. You read Luke chapter number 18, uh, verses number one, uh, maybe down around verse number eight or 10, and I'm telling you, it will bless your socks off because it will put a determination in your spirit. You know, come a little closer, I'm gonna tell you something. People say to me sometimes, Brownlee, you got that level of faith. You got that level of determination. You just believe God can do anything but fail. I say you daggone right. That's what I said, you daggone right. Because when you spend time in prayer, it develops a determination that you gonna hold on to God like everything depends. You can have more degrees than a thermometer. I'm telling you right now, but you got to learn how to depend on God and you get that in your spirit that I'm not going to let you go until you bless my soul. That's the kind of faith God honors. Let me take a dime, put a dime in the meter right there. The Bible talks about that Jesus was preaching in a place in Mark chapter number two. This is not even in my notes. I'm going to give you this here right here because I feel that somebody about to give up and quit. And I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. You got to start depending on him. Depend on him. I mean, get that pit bull, that dog in your spirit. Depend on him and hold on to him like everything depend on him. And the Bible says that when they got there, they couldn't get in because there was no more room. But these men, my God, say we've come too far to go back. The Bible says in Mark chapter number two, they went to the roof and began to uncover the roof. And the Bible says that when Jesus saw their 
faith. That's right. He said unto the sick man, get up, my God, get up from there. When he saw their faith, and I'm telling you right now, that's all God is waiting to do is to see your determining attitude. That's all he's waiting to do is to see your dedication attitude. That's all he's waiting is to see your attitude of dependence, and he'll speak to your faith. Let me get on out of here. Let me get on out of here. Now, when you begin to pray, when you begin to pray, I'm talking about praying with confidence, and I want you to understand that prayer is your greatest asset. It's your greatest asset because prayer allows you access to God. Yes, it does. I know, I, I know you're saying, I ain't dotted all my I's and I haven't crossed all my T's. That's all right. Get into that place of prayer. See, Hebrews 4 and 16 says it like this. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. I don't care who you are, you have access to God through prayer. Let me say this to you here. Uh, a couple of years ago, it's been a couple of years ago, maybe about a year or so ago, I was um, over on uh, off Pennsylvania Avenue near Donnell Drive. I mean, we up in Maryland, y'all, different place. You're not going to know where that is. Anyway, uh, that's towards the city. And uh, the guy was standing out there. And he was panhandling. He was panhandling. This man was panhandling. And while this man was panhandling, I didn't have any change to give him. Lord have mercy. Didn't have any change to give him. And uh, I rolled down my window because I didn't want to ignore him, but I wanted to extend my hand of prayer to him. Good God Almighty. And so when I rolled down the window and I said to him, I said, sir, I'm sorry I don't have any change, but, but listen, what I want to do is I want to offer you prayer. And he took me by the hand. Yeah, about a year ago, he took me by the hand. I began to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you will strengthen this brother and that you will protect and provide for him in Jesus' name. And when I got ready to pull my hand back, he gripped my hand again. And the man began to pray. And he said, Father, I pray now in the name of the laid his hand on the top of my automobile, said, cover this man and his family. Keep this man as he goes to and fro. God, I thank you right now, Father, for blessing him and watching over him in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something right now. Just because somebody don't wear a collar, I have a cross around their neck, don't mean that they can't get a prayer through. Oh, oh my God, my God. I felt the power of God when the homeless man began to pray for me. And I'm telling you right now, after he began to pray, I looked up at him and he looked at me and said, God bless you. Go in the words of that prayer in Jesus name. I'm telling you now, tears begin to roll down my face because if anything, I did not expect that to come from him. What are you saying, man of God tonight? I'm causing you to understand. Y'all better help me up in here. I'm causing you to understand here. I said, y'all better help me up in here. I'm causing you to understand that just because God don't send it from the way that you think it's going to come, don't mean God ain't going to I'm telling you right now, just because God don't send it the way you think he's going to send it, I'm telling you, God's got more than one way to bless you in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, you better hear me as a prophet of the Lord. Get ready because it may not come the way you think it's going to come. It may not come from the person you think it's going to come from. It may not come from the government. It may not come. God, help me right now. It may not come from people who are close to you, but I'm telling you right now, the Lord is your shepherd and you are not going to want for anything. What are you saying? I'm getting happy here. I'm telling you, somebody somewhere is getting ready to bless you real, real good. I dare you to open your mouth and holler glory, hallelujah. Now listen, listen, listen to me here. Prayer allows access to God and then prayer achieves the impossible. Oh my God. The Bible says in Luke 18 and 27, it says, the things which are impossible with men, y'all help me up in here, are possible with God. 
the things which are impossible with man are possible with God. And so when you begin to pray, expect God to do the impossible. Now, I want you to understand something here, and I've got to get out of here. I said that a few minutes ago, but I got to get out of here. Uh, your confidence, your confidence is significant to getting your prayers answered. What did I say? Your confidence. Your confidence is significant when it comes to getting your prayers answered. Mark eleven twenty two. Here it is right here. Have faith in God. You must have, beloved, total confidence. I don't have to tell you nothing deep and spooky and scare everybody in your family. No, have faith in God. Put your total confidence in God. Let me tell you why you ought to do that here. The Bible says in Psalms 118, verse number eight through nine, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Oh, look at verse number nine. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes, than to put confidence in in the government, than to put confidence in what somebody is promising you. You got to put your confidence and your trust in God. Let me tell you something right now. People mean well, but some of them will let you down. Y'all not talking back to me right now. I said people mean well, but they will let you down. And ain't no let down. Oh, I'm going to say it right now. Ain't no letdown than to, than to get a letdown from the folk who you were there for. Good God Almighty. Oh, that thing will cause you. I'm telling you, you'll feel a cry coming up in your throat when you go, I was there for you and I expected you to be there for me. And God's got a way of shaking you and bringing you back to your righteous reality and cause you to understand, wait a minute, you got to keep your trust in God. You got to put your confidence in God. Let me tell you what the Bible says in Proverbs 3. I trust you're getting something out of this because I'm enjoying my own cooking. Watch what it says in Proverbs 3, verse number 25 and 26. Be not afraid of sudden fear. Let me slow down here. Let me slow down here. He says, be not afraid of sudden fear. Proverbs 3 and 25, neither of the desolation of the wicked, oh, I'm talking good talk here, when it cometh. Be not afraid of, don't you fear it. Let me tell you something right now. I know we're in the midst of this pandemic. I know we're in the midst of this, this crazy outbreak, but you ought not be afraid. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. I, I know it's happening around us and it's even happening to people who are dear to us and that we love, but you ought not be afraid. I rebuke the spirit of fear. Be not afraid of sudden fear is what the Bible says. Neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord, verse 26 right here, shall be thy confidence. What did I say? For the Lord shall be thy confidence. Here's the last part. And shall keep thy foot from being taken. You know, when this whole thing broke out, my telephone was ringing off the hook. I'm talking, I'm going to say it because I want to help somebody. I'm talking about people of God who deliver the word of God acting like they were afraid. The devil is a liar. I'm telling you, I shall look to the hills from which cometh my help, my help coming from the Lord. You have no need to fear. Let me tell you what the Bible says. I'm going to help you right here. The Bible talks about it in Luke chapter number 21, verse number six. It says, men's heart fail them for fear. Men's heart fail them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. You know, let, let me tell you, <laughs> for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Sometimes the stuff that is going on around you, watch this here, don't let it take root in you. Just because it's going on around you don't mean it's going to happen in you. And you got to stand fast in the liberty. You got to stand firm in your faith and do not be afraid. 
afraid. Oh my God, my God, my God. Now, let me tell you something. Maintain your confidence and don't be afraid. Now, when you maintain your confidence, you got to be certain and sure of the thing that you're petitioning God for. Yes, goodness. Let me tell you something here. I remember some years ago, our bishop, the late great bishop, Dr. Sherman Howard, he told the people of God, he said, rub your hands together. Rub. He was a man of faith. And, and that's where I got it from. That's, that's all he talked about was faith, 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 faith. And he said, rub your hands together and decree and declare, I'm going to bless somebody. And I'm telling you right now, here I was rubbing my hands together, come out of a broken family. Uh, all I had was my, I didn't even have my GED then. I, I, you know, not educated and rubbing my hands together. I said, I'm going to bless somebody. I'm going to bless somebody. And, and he said, decree, speak it over yourself. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. You know, and, and I began to speak that thing. And then he went further. He said, grab your car keys and shake your car keys and shake your house keys and decree and declare that God is getting ready to bless. And I didn't even have a car at the time. I had an old van I think I was driving. And I grabbed my keys and he looked, I'm telling you, whether he was looking at me or looking in my direction, he said, this week, the Lord is going to exceed your expectation. I grabbed hope to it. You better hear me real good. You know, the Bible decrees and declares in Malachi 2 and 7 that the lips of the priest shall keep knowledge and the people shall seek the law at his mouth. I'm telling you right now, if he would have told me to jump down and do 200 push-ups, I would have did it. If he would have said jump up and down until you break into a crazy sweat, I would have did it. You know, let me drop a dime in a meter. That's why some folk can't get blessed because you don't believe the prophet of the Lord. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter number 20 says, believe the Lord thy God, so shall thy be established. Believe his prophet and show shall thou prosper. And the prophet will tell you something and you won't halfway believe it because it don't tickle your fancy and that's why you miss your prosperity. That devil is a liar, but I'm prophesying to you right now. God is getting ready to give you another opportunity to make a first impression and I don't care if the man or woman of God told you to walk to the back of the church and turn around and come back. There is a blessing in the obedience. And Bishop Howard looked in my direction. He said, this week is going to be your week of favor. And you know, I wanted an Acura legend. You couldn't have told me. I mean, I could taste it. I had come down to the altar and I was believing God for this Acura, Acura legend. And I went out to Alexandria, Virginia, this old school. Some of y'all don't know nothing about the Acura legend EX and LX. That was good. That was good riding back then. Good God of my Lord, I thank you for the 90s. And so I went out there and they turned me down. Did you hear what I said? I said they turned me down. They told me that they couldn't give me that accurate legend. That thing hurt me. I mean, it hurt me so bad because I wanted that accurate legend EX so bad. And then on my way home, I told my beloved, I said, sweetie, I said, sweetie, listen, they, they, they may have turned me down for that Acura, but that's all right. I still got my faith and I still believe God. See, and you have to maintain your confidence, even if it doesn't go the way you think that it should go. Y'all ain't talking back to me up in here. And guess what? On the way home, we was coming up King Street and we got right there to King and whatever that cross street is there by the Lindsay Kelly, but it was a Lindsay Lexus dealership. Thank you, kind spirit. And we turned into the Lexus dealership. I said, I just want to go out here and just walk the parking lot and look because they just turned me down for Acura Legend, you know. And so the man came on out and he said, you like that Lexus? I said, yes, sir. I'm talking about within about 30 minutes later, you know what God's getting ready to do. I said, yes, sir, I, I like this Lexus here. He said, won't you come on inside? He said, matter of fact, let me grab the key and start it up for you. He went and grabbed a tag, started up, not knowing I was just denied for the Acura legend, took us out on a test drive. He said, man, this car fits you. I'm telling you right now, is this something you like? I said, yes, sir, it is something I like. Yes, I do, uh-huh, I do like it. Went inside, came back out. He says, listen, uh, here, here we go. They running a new program, this, that, and the other. Long story short, 
I feel, I feel, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Long story short, we rolled out of there in a, not an Acura, in a Lexus when we were believing God for an Acura. And when I drove up to the church, I'm telling you right now, I remember the prophet of the Lord, the late great Bishop Howard. I can hear his voice saying, God is going to exceed your expectation. What did you saying, ball head preacher? I put my confidence in what he said. And while I was thinking Acura, God was thinking Lexus. And I'm telling you right now, you better hear me as the mouthpiece of God. Sometimes it's not that you're aiming too high and missing. Sometimes you're aiming too low and hitting. And I'm telling you right now, oh my God, you got to get that etch a sketch spirit. Scratch that out and think bigger because God is giving getting ready to exceed your expectation. Why is he going to do it? He's going to do it because you got confidence in what you're believing him for. I'm telling you right now, oh, I'm not talking about when this is over. I'm talking about right now. You better hear me as a prophet of the Lord. God is exceeding every one of your expectations. Why? Because of your confidence. See, when you have confidence, Good God Almighty, when you have confidence, God ain't going to deny you. If he does deny you, he just delayed you, but he ain't going to deny you. This is what the Bible says in James 1. I, I got to read this here for you. You know what? Let me say this to you right now. Somebody said to me the other day, they said, Bishop, you come on and you start talking and you get excited. And I said, and you don't? They said, no, I don't get excited. I just sit there and talk. I said, well, you do what works for you. You hear me? I said, but my Bible tells me in Hebrews that the word of the Lord is quick and it's alive and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. This word is alive. And I'm telling you right now, I, I don't care with all the education, with all the learning. When you start talking about the word of the Lord, that thing get in your belly and you start feeling, I'm telling you, I may have to put a seat belt on my seat to maintain myself, but that's all right. This chair got wheels on it. I roll it around this house. When I start talking about the goodness of Jesus and in his word, I can feel the power of God. I'm telling you right now, and if you can't feel it, feel for it because the Holy Ghost is moving right now in the name of Jesus. I dare you to clap your hands right there. Jesus is getting ready to do this thing. I'm telling you. Now, hear me good. Hear me good. Hear me good. Hear me good. Thank you. Now watch what it says here. There, 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 there must be, whoo, good God Almighty, there, there must be confidence when you pray. Got to be confidence when you pray. You, you don't pray just because you have problems. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. You, you don't pray just because, and let me tell you something right now. If, if you pray just because you have problems, then you're going to always have problems. What did I just say? I said, if you're only praying because you have problems, then you're going to always have problems. But you got to pray not just because you have problems. You have to, have, you have to pray because you are confident of the solution. You're confident of the answer. Let me read James 1 and 6. I'm going to have to cut this off. I'm telling you, this, this, this is good here. This is good eating here. Oh, they're going to fly me all over the world to teach this here. Watch what it says here in James 1 and 6. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. Don't ask God nothing and you ain't certain. Wavering. Don't ask him nothing wavering. For he that wavereth, is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. You're just going every which way. For let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. I'm right here in the Bible, James 1, 6, and 7. Here it is, verse number 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. In all his, Lord have mercy. He's, he's unstable in all his ways. Let me cut through here. You have to have confidence when you're praying. When you pray, you got to have, you know, you know, a lot of times folk, they, 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 they pray. I, I remember one time somebody praying with me one day and uh, I said, I'm, I'm believing you to believe God to work this situation out. And they ended the prayer with the little get out. I'm going to show you the little prayer that they end with the get out. 
Because sometimes they, they feel like, well, if it don't work, I don't want nobody to come back and say that, that it was on me. Your reputation ain't on the line. Who you think you are? Please. You thinking more of yourself than you ought to. Mm -mm. And so we, we begin to pray. And, and they said, now, Lord, if it be thy will. That's supposed to be they get out. If if it be thy will. What you mean if it be thy will? I, I know that's the word of the Lord, but you better shut up with that one there. If it, it's his will because it's his word. Hello? Don't hang up on me. I'm paying for this call. It's his will because it's his word. If it be thy will. God, I'm standing firm on this thing right here. I'm standing firm on it. I told my son, he playing college football. I said, let me tell you something, son. Even if you jump offside, jump offside going 100 miles an hour. Do you hear me? I said, even if you're going the wrong way, go the wrong way, full speed. Do you hear what I'm trying to tell you right now? You know, I'm going to say something to you. I got to get out of here. I'm enjoying you. Let me tell you something here. I, I, my wife told me I was preaching somewhere. I think I was preaching at Bible Way Conference or somewhere. One of them conferences I was preaching in. And she said to me, she said, Jason, you know, uh, you was talking about uh, Noah leading the children to Israel. Uh, I said, what? And she said, yeah, I know you meant to say Moses, but you were saying Noah leading the children of Israel. I said, are you serious? She said, yeah. I said, are you sure? She said, yeah. She said, and then you meant to say Abraham sacrificed his son. She said, but you got, you were so excited. You said Elijah sacrificed his son. I said, are you sure, sweetie? She said, yeah, baby, I, I, I got it right here. I said, well, she said, but don't worry. You said it with so much confidence. The folk was running, jumping and screaming anyway. Uh-oh, you just missed that. I helped you right there. Even if <laughs> you even if it ain't coming out right, you do it with so much confidence. I'm telling you, God will still get the glory out of it. She said, when you said no other people, I guess they understood what you meant. Because they got happy and the folk got delivered and blessed. And even when you were saying Elijah rather than Abraham, the folk got happy and, and was blessed. Let me tell you something right now. Don't you let nothing or nobody shake your confidence. When you start praying and you start believing God, I, I know sometimes you want, if it be thy will, you better know his will for you go in there. And I'm telling tell you right now, I'm not talking about praying your way. I'm talking about confidence in prayer, standing on the word of the Lord. Now, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. See, but there are different levels. There are different levels. If y'all going to give me six more, seven more minutes, then type something in there and tell me you got a few more minutes, Bishop. Watch this here. There, there are different levels of confidence. There are different levels. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Maybe they want me to stop. All right, if you're going to give me a few more minutes, type something in there. Say, Bishop, you got a few more. I mean, where you got to go? We at home. You know, you got DVR. You can, you know, DVR your program. All right. Now, 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 now listen. Help, now, now, help. Ain't nobody saying you got a few more minutes, Bishop. I guess they want me to close. I guess I'll close my Bible. Y'all hitting hearts and likes, but ain't nobody telling me I got a few more minutes here. Yo, all, all right. There we go. One person say a few more, few more minutes, Bishop. You, you got it. All right. Thanks, Vince. I appreciate it. All right. You, you, th thank you. Thank you, Tracy. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, AJ. AJ said, you got time. Bishop, thank you. Preach, but thank, thank you. All right. Let me tell you something right now. Bless you, Elder Campbell. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Thank you, Ballard. I appreciate you. Love you. Thank you. All right. If I add all that time up, I got about 20 more minutes. Now, listen to me, and I want you to hear me good. There are levels. There are levels. There are different levels of confidence. I, I, I want you to hear me. And, and you got to pray that God get you at that level of confidence because Confidence is not arrogance. Let me hear this here. See, because sometimes people, when they get around people who are confident because they don't understand their confidence, and I, he's so arrogant, she's so arrogant. No, it's not that they're arrogant and some people are. It's not that they're arrogant. They are just confident. And the days are gone of you watering down who you are to make people feel comfortable around you. That devil is a liar. My son used to be playing basketball when he was a little fella out in the front yard. And he was bigger than some of his friends and stuff. And he said, I don't want to hurt him. I said, man, beat them friends up. God got a new batch of friends for you. you. Are you serious? Don't worry about them jokers. Toughen them up. They'll be just fine. What are you saying? If you got to keep watering down your confidence so that people won't think that you're arrogant, cut them folk loose. God got a brand new group of friends for you who can understand that you are confident and not arrogant. If you're good at what you're good at, then you're just good at what you're good at. God has made you that way. And sometimes the fifth, the, sometimes the pond you swim in it is just too small. 
Yes, it is. All right. Now, now listen, there are multiple levels. There are multiple levels of, of confidence. You have this casual confidence according to Proverbs 10 and 4. Jot that down, study in your spare time. All right. He becometh poor that dealer with a slack hand. All right. Then, then you have this communicative confidence. Uh, you talk it, but you don't walk it. That's according to Proverbs chapter number 14, verse number 23. Then you have this coerced confidence. That's according to Judges chapter number four with Barak and Deborah. He said, well, if you go, I'll go. But if you don't go, then I won't go. But you got this, watch this here, this full out committed confidence. That's what God is looking for. That's like with Naomi and Ruth. Naomi told Ruth, she said, listen, girl, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't have no more children. And if I were to meet somebody and we were to be intimate by the time I raise that child to be your husband and y'all to be too old, I don't have anything to offer you. Uh, best thing I can tell you to do is go back to your people. Uh, but the Bible says that Ruth clung to Naomi and she had this level of confidence. And she said, where you go, I go. Where you eat, I eat. Where you lie, I lie. Where you die, I die. Your God to be my God. And that's the level of confidence that you have to have when you are trusting God. Let me tell you something right now. I know I'm about to make the devil man. That's why I enjoy pastoring life-changing Christian center. Because you talking about a body of believers. Now, I'm telling you, ministry partners, family and friends, y'all hold tight because I'm with these folk every Wednesday and Sundays when we get back together. And you talking about people that have a level of confidence, that believe that God can do anything but fail. I remember my mother-in-law laid my mother in love laid in a coma and I came out and told the people of God, I believe God, if we begin to, he shall behind. If we begin to pray, God will pull her out of that thing. And the people begin to pray because at that time, my God, I had become weak in my physical body. First lady and I was just believing God to pull her through. And I'm telling you right now, the people of God, I'm talking about people who didn't have a title. I'm talking about people who didn't have a designated parking spot. I'm talking about folks standing up there saying words like, she shall live and not die. She shall be raised up from that bed of affliction. And I'm telling you right now, God attended to the confidence of the people and the same God back then is the same God right now. Now, I'm telling you now, I know that there's people watching me. Am I getting too excited? No, I ain't. I ain't excited enough. There are people who are watching me right now. You're sitting there saying, God, I'm believing you for a breakthrough. I'm believing you for a miracle. And God says, when you pray, I need you to pray with certainty and clarity and confidence that I can do anything but fail. I got to get on out of here. I'm telling you right now. Let me say this to you right now. Your confidence is not arrogance, but it's your total assurance in God's ability. What did I just say? I said your confidence is not arrogance. It is your total assurance in God's ability. See, and this is the problem sometimes. Sometimes people look at you, but they don't see God, but don't realize that it's God that's all in you. What did I just say? See, when you have this level of assurance, when you have this level of confidence, it's not in your ability, it's in God's ability. If you really want to preach like Paul, my God, and pray like Peter, or pray like Peter and preach like Paul, get into the things of God. This is what the Bible says when you start talking about having that total confidence and, a, and, and assurance in God's ability. He said in Genesis 18 and 14, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Good God Almighty. See, when you get to that point right there, it ain't about your budget. It's about his budget. When you get to that point there, it's not about your ability. It's about his ability. And people better be careful how they try to put thumbs down on you, how they start trying to think that you ain't going to come through. Baby, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. See, when you gain that confidence in God's ability, it'll begin to release your ability. And you begin to say things like this right here. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You'll be 
begin to say things like this right here. I thank God who has empowered me to stand in ministry. See, when you have that confidence in when you're praying, you're going to see God do the incredible. You're going to see God do the impossible. You're going to see God do the unthinkable. I'm telling you now, and the Lord told me to tell you tonight that he said, when you get on, tell the people that when they come out of this, even now, I'm raising their confidence. Good God Almighty. I'm talking about the type of confidence that David had when he defeated Goliath. Woo! Good God Almighty. I'm talking about that type of confidence that Abel had when he worshiped God. That type of confidence that Enoch had when he walked with God. That type of confidence that Noah had when he worked for God. That type of confidence that Abraham had when he went for God. I'm done. I've got to get out of here. I want you to begin to pray with confidence. Pray knowing that God is going to perform just what he said he was going to do. Pray knowing that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. See, you got to pray that kind of prayer. The Bible talks about in Ecclesiastes. No, I'm going to go straight to Ephesians chapter number three. See, when you get to Ephesians chapter number three, we're, we're known for quoting that last part that says, Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Let me tell you something right now. That is the conclusion of the Apostle Paul prayer. He starts praying at about maybe verse 13 or 14, but by the time he finished crying out to God, making this commitment to God, he arrives at a place of total confidence. And what are you saying, Bishop? I'm telling you, stay in the face of God until you cry, until you can't cry no more. Stay in the face of God until you renew your commitment to God. God. Stay in the face of God and don't come out until you come out with total confidence that God is going to perform just what he said. i got to get on out of here, but that is my prayer for you tonight, that you have that type of confidence that Shadrach, Meshach, and, and the Hebrew boys had, and Abednego had, when they stood before King Nebuchadnezzar. They had confidence that God was going to protect them. Good God Almighty. You got to have the type of confidence that Hannah had. Are you getting something out of this here? Have that type of confidence that Hannah had when she believed God that God was going to give her a child. She said, God, I believe that you're going to produce in my barren womb and I'm making a vow to you. You got to have that type of confidence that the apostle Paul had in Acts chapter number 27 where he says, listen, we should have never set sail, but since we out here, I still believe God is going to preserve us. You got to have that same type of confidence that David had when he went out out to fight Goliath. He said, wait a minute, the same God that delivered me from the hands of the bear and the lion is the same God that's going to help me get over this thing here. That's going to help me kill this giant. You got to have that same type of confidence that Jehoshaphat had when the enemy came up against him. I mean, his confidence was so strong that he said, God, it was you that delivered Israel out of Egypt. God, I still believe God. And this is my prayer tonight, beloved, that in the midst of what you're going through, in the midst of what you're dealing with, that your prayer will be, have confidence in God that whatsoever things ye desire when you pray, you believe that you have them, for ye shall have them according to the word of the Lord. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that God will restore that God will redeem, and that God will renew your confidence. I don't know what you've gone through. I don't know how bad it's been for you, but I'm believing God right now that God will redeem and restore and renew your confidence in the name of Jesus. I see it right now. I'm telling you right now, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against you, thank you, shall prosper. You are being renewed in God, and God is strengthening you right where you are. Power of life and death is in the tongue. I want you to begin to decree and declare it. I want you to begin to speak it. 
regardless of what it looks like. You have to speak victory in the face of adversity. I'm telling you right now, the Bible says that uh, Mary and Martha said to Jesus, Jesus, had you been here, my brother would not have died. But she said, nevertheless, God, whatever you ask, what, what, whatever you ask for, I still believe that you can do it right now. And you got to get that way. You got to have that type of confidence in God's ability that God, even now, they're saying it's too late, but we trust you and we believe you. I'm praying that every negative word that has ever been spoken over your life be highlighted and deleted right now. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying that God would give you the confidence to open your mouth and decree and declare that you are fearfully and that you are wonderfully made. I'm telling you, if I can speak to all of you or hundreds and thousands of you all around this world, here I was, didn't even finish high school the first time around. I had to go back and take that GED test two or three times before I could pass it and then further my education from there. And for so long, I used to feel inferior. I used to feel bad when people would begin to talk about their education status, when they begin to talk about stuff. But you know what? I, I, I tell you right now, God has blessed me. And, and I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm a bless somebody. And it's not because my ability It's because God's ability in me. It's because God's ability in me. I, I'm telling you now, I, I, I don't want for nothing. And I'm not, I make my boast in the Lord. You know, God has been good to me and my family. And I'm telling I'm not talking about, uh, 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 oh, look, let me just move on here. I, I'm talking about the ability of God, but it was not apart from God delivering me from that negative mindset and that negative perspective of, of myself. And God gave me this confidence. I'm telling you now. And the same God that did it for me is doing it for you right now. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray with you right now. I don't care what you're dealing with or how long you've been dealing with it or, or, or what you're up against now. I'm telling you, no shame, no shame, no embarrassment. The same God that did it for me and so many others, he's going to do it for you. The same God that did it from David, took him from the sheepfold and brought him to lead Israel, his people. The same God, the same God is going to do it for you. I'm telling you now, we're signing off. I'm, I'm over my time, but I want you to pray with me. And what I'm praying for is your confidence that you will step out and trust God at his word. You're, you're living way beneath your means. I'm telling you right now, man of God, woman of God, hear me. I'm talking to you. I can call your name now. You're living way beneath your means. God says, I wanted you to tune in to hear this word because I need to build your confidence up. I, I just don't need to build your confidence up. I hear the Lord saying, not just in God, I need to build your confidence up in yourself because I ordained you and, and, and I called you. I'm telling you, before you were ever formed in your mother's womb, I, I ordained you and I sent you forth and I need you not to walk in arrogance, but walk in confidence. No longer shall you allow people to make you feel that you don't matter. No longer shall you allow people to make you feel that perhaps you don't belong in the reindeer game. I'm telling you right now, hear me as a prophet of the Lord. I speak to you now in the name of Jesus. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. I know the first marriage didn't work out, but don't you kill your confidence. You're still a wonderful husband. You're still a wonderful wife. I, I, I know mom and daddy may have gone through some things, and they didn't didn't do the best they could and, and perhaps they were distracted. But I'm telling you now, God has you right where he wants you, young man. He has you right where he wants you, young lady. God wants to do a new thing in you right now in the name of Jesus. Grace is an eternal father. We thank you right now, Father, for building our confidence. Not arrogance, not pride, God, but confidence, God. Knowing that we can do anything but fail. God, I bless you right now that your people shall begin to lift their heads, Father. Father, that the sun shall begin to shine on their faces, Father. Confidence, Father, to step out of that comfort zone. Confidence, oh God, to decree and declare. Confidence, oh God. What, what, if, if they don't hoot when they preach God, they are teach with confidence, oh God. God, if, if they don't sing or prophesy, God, they are pray and do whatever it is that you called them to do with confidence, 
And for this, we say, thank you, God. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to somebody right now. I, I know you're saying school is not for me. The education thing is not for me. It's not working for me right now. I'm telling you, stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop comparing yourself to other people. He that has begun a good work and you shall perform it. The hand of God is upon you. Let me tell you something right now. It may take you five years or six years to get a four-year degree, but don't you give up and don't you quit. I'm telling you right now, if God has put it in your spirit, you keep going. I know you wrote that script, you wrote that book, and it seemed like nobody believes in you. I'm telling you, you keep right on pushing. God is getting ready to divinely set it up for you. I hear it in the Holy Spirit right now. Lift up your head. Woman, staying at home all day. All of us are staying at home, but even before all of this happened, you act like you didn't want to go out in public because people look at you like you crazy because you gained a little weight and you're not the person you used to be. I come against that spirit right now. Every negative word that was spoken over your life, we delete it right now. In the name of Jesus, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Hey, man of God, listen to me, my brother. Listen to me. I know they put thumbs down on you and told you that you were not worth that promotion and that you were not worth that, that, that level of income, but that devil is a liar. Hear me real good. You're looking, you're looking at somebody who's lived that. And if God can do it for me, he can do it for you right now. In the, I'm standing in the gap for you. Believe God. Have faith in God and watch he do it for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I love you. I love you. I love you. God bless you. God keep you. Listen, so saints of God, so into this word. This word bless you. So into this word. So into this word. I've been asking the people of God outside of their tithing and offering to sow seed of 42.10, coming from Job chapter number 42, verse 10, and God turned that thing. Alrighty? So, already you know the giving avenues here. Somebody's going to put it up. Somebody put it up real good. There it is right there. Life-changing one. Dollar sign, life-changing one. That's the cash app. Alrighty? God is doing great things for you. I love you, Sister Nat. I love you, Vince. I love you. Thank you so much for your time. Bonita, God bless you. I love you, my sister. Love you so much. I'm going to tell First Lady you love her. I'm going, she sees it. There it is. There it is. I love you. Shemania, I love you, Elder. I love your mother. I love your mama, Dr. Velma. I love you. That's it. That's it. That's it. I love you. I love you. Walk in this word. I'll see you back here Sunday. Uh, Saturday, I'm sorry. I'll see you back here Saturday at 7. Thank you, Sister Nat. I love you. I love you so much. Hey, Terry, I love you, sis. Love you so much. Mother Gail, I love you so much. Love you much. Love you. Love you. Elder Campbell, I love you. Amen. Adrian Thomas, love you. Thank you so much. Give the fire. Life-changing Christian Center. That's it. Hey, my brother, Dr. Marvin Ford. Hey, man, I love you so much. You have been an inspiration to me for years, Ford. I mean it, man. I mean it. Marvin, inbox me, man. Let's talk. God bless you. God, I promise I'm going to check my DM for you. All right? I promise. Mother Gail, I love you. Thank you all so much. That's it. That's it. Dollar sign, life changing. That's it. Life changing. Uh, give, give it to me. Dollar sign, life changing. Somebody's asking about it. Life changing one. That's what it is. Dollar sign life changing one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bunny and Mike, thank y'all for your love. Thank you. Hey man, I look forward to it. Deacon Kearns, thank you so much. Your phone call, bless my heart. Thank you so much. I love you so much. That's it. Build it up. Build your confidence up. Amen. Aunt Cookie, I love you. Thank you so much. I miss y'all so much. Thank you. There it is. It's on the screen. I miss you all so much. All righty. Enjoy your family and friends. I'm going to give you that information when we talk about the singles with the singles and the married couples. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Love you so much. I love you. Hey, Nikki, I love you from First Lady and I. Amen. Love you. Hey, Angie, I love you. I love you so much. Hugs and kisses. I love you to life. I love you to life. I love you to life. I, I can't put my family on right now because the barber shops are closed. The nail shops are closed already. And, and trust me, uh, yeah, yeah, you know how it is. I come on and do mine. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, it's going to be all right. 
Mother, good to see you. Good to see you. Yes, yes. Mother Davis, I love you. All right? I love y'all so much. Amen. Hey, Marissa, love you too, sweetie. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Akiva, hey. God bless you. God bless you. Man, it's good to see you. I hope you're doing good, man. Hey, man, I'm going to keep you. We got to talk soon, man. We got to talk soon. We got to talk soon. That brother's an awesome playwright. Love you. Love y'all. All right. I'm a little over my time, but I love y'all so much. All righty. Y'all make sure you check on each other. Make sure you check on each other. All right. Love you. Mother Lucy, I love you so much. I love you. I love you. Thank you so much. All righty. God bless you. God keep you. It's my prayer. All righty. God bless you.